Hello, how are you? Welcome so much to our YouTube channel. My name is Amina Ramazani. Hi guy and people here call me Mrs. Finance. Welcome so much to the continuation of our series that we started like some few weeks ago. And today we are in step number four. And this step number four involves the setting of SMART financial goals. We've looked at step one, calculating your net worth. We've looked at step two, uh, this is determining the habits, your habits and behavior behind your net worth. And we've looked at step three, which is establishing or determining your why. The why to your financial fit life. And then today we are looking at step number four, which is setting smart financial goals. Now, um, like all other goals in life, they are supposed to be smart goals. Even in our organizations, in our companies, we, we, we set goals that are smart. The same principle and concept that you use when setting goals and objectives for your company, you should use them when setting your own financial goals. And SMART is an abbreviation that means, uh, has words that mean different things in all together in that goal. And the first uh, letter, which is S, means specific. So when you are setting your financial goals, make sure your goals are specific. Don't set goals that are vague or goals that are, are, are um, in, uh, they leave you not knowing exactly what you're talking about. A goal should be specific because we want it to set a, a direction to you. We want the goal to make you understand exactly what is needed. Don't let the, a lot of ambiguity in your goals. Remove that by making sure your goal is specific. So, because we are dealing with finance, let's assume uh, you want to save. Don't say, I want to start save, saving in the year 2023. Starting to save in the year 2023 is not a goal. Because how much are you saving? For what are you saving it for? Saying you want to start saving, it is not a specific goal. And so it's not a smart goal. You're supposed to say, by the end of 2023, I want to have, for example, 15 million in emergency fund. At least you've specified that it is 15 million. Or maybe uh, by the end of the year 20. 23 i want to buy government bonds worth 25 or 20 million at least you've specified it's a government bond and then you've specified the amount you want to buy a bond worth 25 million that then your goal is specific so please avoid leaving goals that are hanging and you know when goals are hanging they give you some latitude to not be able to do what you're supposed to do because your goal is not specific. You tend to take advantage of the fact that the goal is very general. Try to minimize the, the, the meaning and make the meaning more narrow and more clear and more specific to you. And then the following one is, me, is M, which stands for measurement. Make sure your goal is measurable. If we have already said that you want to save maybe 15 million or 12 million in emergency fund by the end of this year, then it means maybe you, you save uh, 1 million every year. I mean every month. That means you save 1 million every month. If you save 1 million every month from January to December, then you will have your 12 million. So here you've tried to measure your goal. Your goal can really be measured and divided into actionable steps that will make you do simple steps every day, but they are leading you to the big picture. And please don't 
uh, rely on your honesty. Don't rely on your deeds to make this thing a success. I would want to urge you to make sure you automate this process. If you've said you're saving 1 million every month, hmm, if you depend on you being paid and then you take physically the 1 million and put it in your bank account or in your emergency fund, I doubt if that is going to be done. So the best option is to automate this process. And how do you automate it? Just put a standing order. In that account where you receive your payments, your incomes, your salaries, your cash inflows, then use that account and put a standing order with your bank that every 25th of every month, please deduct 1 million from this main account and take it to this emergency account. I'd really want to insist on this. Make sure you put a standing order. And this means you're automating the process. It doesn't have to come through you because when you have that one million, my friend, and you sleep with it, you wake up in the morning, something comes up, you're going to use that money and you will not achieve your goal. So when you automate it, it, may, you, it, it helps you uh, not be in a position to compromise your goals because you don't even have the money. It's done in the system, system via system, account via account, and everything is sorted. So after you are, you've set a specific goal, you've measured your, your goal, so your goal is now measurable, now you go to the next step of the SMART goal, which is achievable. You are supposed to set goals that are attainable. Goals that are achievable. Please don't set a very hard goal for you to achieve. Because if it's too hard, you are going to be discouraged and you will hate this process. And you are going to give up altogether. And that is not our aim. But also, don't set a very easy goal. Because very easy goals will not take you to, to your destined land, to your destined financial position, to your destined... Uh, net worth figure. It will not take you there because it's too simple. You just achieve it like in a few days and then you said, okay, now I have the rest of the year to, to rest. No, don't do that. So it should not be too hard and not too easy. Find a compromised place where you know the goals are going to be achievable. They are hard, yes, but and achievable at the same time. Okay? Now after that step, we go to this other step where you're going to set a realistic goal you're going to set a relevant goal now a relevant goal is a goal that makes sense only to you my friends <laughs> personal finance is really personal is truly personal no two personal finances are the same so it's only you who knows your financial reality so please set a goal that is so relevant to you. Relevant to your financial realities, relevant to your beliefs, relevant to your missions and vision, relevant to your current financial situation. Don't copy anybody because you don't know where they're getting their money. It's only your sources of money that you are sure of. So set a goal that only speaks to you. A goal that speaks to your existence, that speaks to your reality, that speaks to your belief, because it's only then that that goal will make sense to you. And when a goal makes sense to you, you're going to be very, you'll be very much willing to give what it takes to attain that goal. So here I'd really like to insist, don't copy anyone, and please realize that personal finance is indeed personal. Okay, that has to only make sense to you and only you. So when you set a, a relevant goal, then please consider the factor of time. Your goal to be smart, it must have a time frame. Goals must be time bound for them to be smart. Because when you have a time frame in your goal, then it gives you a sense of urgency and a sense of importance and you will know how much time left for you to to fulfill that goal and if you are sleeping on the goal you will wake up so don't just say i want to achieve financial freedom and then you are done by when 
what's the deadline till when as in when, when are we going to say up to this point you should have attained something so make sure your goals are time bound make sure your goals tell you up to when they should be achieved okay when when your goal is smart it will give you the the urge the interest the motivation to continue achieving it because the goal is smart if in any way you are unable to set a smart financial goal then please contact us leave a comment for us in the comment section tell us exactly which part of goal setting is difficult to you and we will attend to you personally and answer your question uh, we would also like that you make your smart goals today remember we have that notebook that diary we started with we've calculated your notebook we've written it down in the last step i told you to write your why in that notebook so i know i want to believe you now have your why there so now go and set financial goals which are smart be specific make sure they are measurable make sure they are attainable they are very le- relevant and they are time bound so thank you so much for listening and please uh, if you're joining us today welcome so much but let me let me inform you that we already have other steps we've recorded towards starting a financial fit life i want to ask you to go and watch and learn from step number 1 step number 2 step number 3 and today we did step number 4 it's only when you've gone through all those steps you will really understand what this is all about and you'll be in a position now to even follow in the following steps we are going now to record another step that is following in order to conclude this series and i want to thank you so much for being with us since we started this series it's been fantastic making them we've learned a lot in the process of making them and you hope you're still learning also and you've also learned a lot so far and please keep it here if you haven't subscribed I want to ask you please subscribe share the video with your friends because we want to create a financial literate society okay thank you so much for listening and being with me up to this end i will see you again in the next one bye